Beloved of the Lord Jesus, God has appointed us to be here at this time, along with the world of lost sinners in countless numbers. Consider this gospel study. John 15, verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. God our Father, I ask you to bless your word that goes out by the Holy Spirit in each loving heart in Christ who receive it. I pray this in Jesus' holy name. There is no sinless gospel. Luke 5, verse 32. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Without Christ died for our sins, repentance is just an empty word. Without any attendant convicting ministry of the Holy Spirit, that faith from God empowers in the called out believer. Many will be led to a false belief. Many will fall away who never were saved. There is another gospel, a deadly gospel. There is no gospel preached that mixes in anything that man does, could do, must do, but confess belief in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior according to the gospel. And if it does, it's another gospel. Using repentance, for instance, which is a change of mind about our sinful nature, produced by godly sorrow for sin, by conviction through the Holy Spirit, that is accomplished in us and converting it in the preaching to actions that show such repentance as a condition of salvation or any act that we must not do or do perfectly or show some sign is another gospel that God condemns. Galatians 1 verses 6 to 9. There is no gospel that requires perfection for there is none this side of heaven. We are justified in Christ, not ourselves, nor in our progress in being made holy after we are saved. This is between God and us individually. There is no gospel salvation if proven by man keeping any law. A Sabbath being in Christ, in my opinion, is our Sabbath rest. Hebrews 4 verses 9 to 11. Hebrews 2 verse 3. Or receiving a baptism, or speaking in tongues, or any other sign gift. Not anything, but by Christ alone. Belief by grace alone, through faith alone, God gives in Christ alone as Lord and Savior. This is God's way to eternal life. And what God gives through Christ, let no one put asunder by any condition, any sign, any law, anything that denies the finished work of Jesus and the eternal salvation he bestows through what he finished for we, his bride-to-be. We are engaged to be married to our Lord. God our Father will see us through to that blessed day. The Holy Spirit seals us forever as the guarantee. Jesus keeps us as our high priest above. His blood cleans us daily. Our sins confessed, our Father forgives in Christ. A good study is 1 John 1 verses 6 to 9. There are no perfect saints on this side of heaven. We are saved forever and renewed daily as we, being in Christ, confess sin and do not practice sinning. For Christ died to deliver us from all sins and empowers us for life lived in him for the glory of God. We are one church of the faithful. Colossians 3, 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by him. Is there a message, beloved, that gives greater glory to God than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not this side of heaven. The eternal purpose of salvation is to make us capable of glorifying God forever and ever and ever. Hebrews 12, verses 2 and 3. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him, that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, so that you not be weary and faint in your minds. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. Romans 1 verse 16 
For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We preach the whosoever will gospel, the whosoever will gospel. Beloved, God has ordained us that we in our faithful evangelism would be the means by which he would save his own whom the Father has given him. To be faithful to him is the purpose in the fulfillment of his sovereign plan to be an instrument that he can use to be a vessel unto honor fit for the master's use to be obedient because that brings blessing and eternal rewards as well for us when we arrive in God's kingdom. Mark 16 15 Jesus speaks and he said to them go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Father, in the holy name of our Lord Jesus, I pray for a great anointing of the gospel that your blessed saint who hears this proclaims to the world that it be blessed to move the lost in ways that you desire as well as pierce the hardened heart of those who reject it, thereby putting them on notice that you have spoken to them through this ministry of your saint by the Holy Spirit. I pray that you encourage your beloved who serves you to be bold in your love and never give in to the forces around us that would constrain the continuation of this work in faith and that the Spirit fill us daily for battle with the gospel of peace that we wear on feet destined to walk in your presence one day. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all except that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. 1 Timothy 1 verse 15. I say this to all the world and believers as well. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone on the truths that follow. The spiritual state of all human beings is a nature born spiritually dead to God in trespasses and sins under the condemnation and judgment by the wrath of God on sin. This reality of the sin nature is manifest even in little children. Any rational person confronts this reality in their lives. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 to 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Proverbs 20, verse 9. Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Who can say that, believer or lost? Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5 verse 8 But God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Romans 8 verse 32 He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things 1 John 4 verses 9 to 10 In this was manifest the love of God toward us because God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. He paid the price. He paid it once and for all. Galatians 3, 22. But the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Beloved, the cross demonstrates the righteousness of God. The cross of Christ puts the justice of God on display by showing God couldn't pass over sin. He couldn't pass over sin's judgment. The cross satisfied God. Christ died for God to declare God's justice, God's grace, God's consistency. God confirms by Christ's sacrifice God's law. Beloved, it's his blood. He paid it, his blood. It's the Lord's blood. Every sinner and every sin committed by every person who ever lived must be paid for. Every sin 
No sin goes unpunished. Either the sinner will pay for it in eternal judgment, or it was paid for in full in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, his body, his blood, his death, his burial, his resurrection unto eternal life. But every sin will be paid for. God is committed to mercy. He forgives, but he's committed to justice, that he puts his son on a cross as the perfect sacrifice that his justice requires. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever is the gospel we preach. Everyone can come. Whosoever. Everlasting life begins in us through the indwelling Holy Spirit we receive when we first believed and is perfected at Christ's call to be caught up to him. And so shall we ever be with our Lord. John 14, verses 1 to 3. It is a future state of conscious, sinless life, a perfected soul and spirit in a glorified body, lived in the presence of a holy God with the family of God. Hallelujah! We will be given a new body that cannot die. It is perfect in all ways, like that which Jesus had when he rose from the dead. Oh Lord, we look forward to that day. Luke 24, 39, Jesus speaks. Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me, and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones that you see me have. This is after he rose from the dead. They didn't understand or know him. He had to prove himself. He had to show them. They were so stunned. They were so in grief. They didn't recognize him, though they should have. My goodness gracious, he, he walked through the wall. He didn't have to open the door. It was a spiritual body, and we will have a body like Jesus. John 20, 27. Then said he to Thomas, Reach here your finger and behold my hands, and reach here your hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless but believing. Beloved, what does it mean to perish? As it's spoken of in John 3.16 shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It means the body of flesh and bones ceases to exist, but the soul and spirit of man, which was made to last forever, continues into eternity in some bodily form, in a conscious state. Oh Lord, deliver them from that, referred to as the second death, in a place apart from God forever called the lake of fire. There is a judgment on sin. No one can stand before the judgment seat of Christ on that last day and claim that their works get them into the kingdom. No one can stand on their works. Everyone has sinned and come short of the glory of God. We preach the gospel to everyone. We pray for an anointing. We don't want anyone lost because that salvation that we receive gives them a ticket to forever in the presence of God, and if they don't receive the gospel message, we haven't done our job. That's right, we haven't done our job. The judgment of God on sin is eternal. Jesus speaks, Revelation 21, verse 8, But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and fornicators, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Beloved, our Lord, God the Son, had to die. He had to die and he had to rise from the dead. You see, we are natural born sinners living in a sin nature. That sin nature doesn't go away, by the way, after we're saved. It still is there in us. Remember that. There's a fight going on. Paul talked to us about that. There's this battle. Paul taught us. Beloved, 1 John 2, verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Whosoever comes, his sins or her sins will be paid for by Jesus Christ, by his blood, by his death, by his resurrection, by the giving of his body, by his sinless life, the blood. You need the blood. The blood's got to wash us clean. 
We're always clean in front of God. Oh, we sin. We will sin. We know that. The Bible tells us that. Great saints knew their sins. I can tell you that. Great saints. Knew, Paul knew it. They all knew it. The blood of Christ is without sin. His pure blood paid for all our sins. Hebrews 9, 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission of sins. Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25. And Isaiah 7, verses 14. But a virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And here is the virgin birth. The virgin birth is critical to understanding the full gospel and to knowing that Jesus was the God-man, a sinless God-man, born of a virgin, critical to lay the foundation for the credentials of Jesus Christ. God sent his son who was God in the flesh, and he lived a sinless life to die for our sins. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the sting of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Hebrews 2, verse 9. Beloved, we got to get this straight. Emmanuel is God. Jesus Christ is Emmanuel. Only God in the flesh could save us from our sins by his sacrificial death on our behalf, which redeemed on the cross by his blood, death, and resurrection, all those who believe on him. Hebrews 9, verse 12, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hebrews 10, verse 14, for by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Here is the essential gospel that Paul taught us. Who was taught? By God. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which i received how that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he appeared to peter and then to the twelve 1 corinthians 15 verses 1 to 5 salvation beloved was accomplished by christ its provision the means propitiation sacrifice the blood covering is for God, that God could never be accused of being unjust. God went to the extreme of executing his own beloved son. 2 Corinthians 5, 15. And that he died for all, that they who live should no longer live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them and rose again. Let us beware of another gospel. Galatians 1, 6-9. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there is some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed, that we said before, so say I again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that you have received, let him be accursed. Galatians 1, verses 6 to 9. Beloved, the word of God must be honored through the gospel. In Isaiah 55, verse 11, Jesus tells us, So my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Beloved, are you called to be one of his? Jesus speaks. And he said, Therefore I say unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. John 6, verse 65. John 6, verse 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whosoever comes to me I will never cast out. John 14, 6. I am the way 
and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Salvation is a free gift of God to anyone who comes. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. By receiving this free gift of God's grace is the only way God can have direct communication with us. We must be born again. This is how we become God's adopted children, through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. He has saved us from the penalty of our sins. He has delivered us from death that already exists into eternal life. And that death that already exists for those who do not believe on him is a spiritual separation from God now and unto forever. But we, beloved, we have been delivered from that into a new and living relationship as children of God forever. And we want to pass that on to all the lost on YouTube, on Facebook, every place, on Twitter. That is our, that is our ministry. That is our service to God. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Does anyone hear that? It's now. Look around. Check out this world. Check yourself out. Time is moving and tomorrow may change the way. Revelation 3 verse 20. Jesus speaks, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open that door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Beloved, God the Holy Spirit is at work simultaneously all over the world and here we know that we have received the Holy Spirit because we believe. When the gospel is shared, the Holy Spirit convicts the called out sinner, the one that is destined to be with God. They come. Therefore, we preach the whosoever will come gospel. Romans 10 verses 9 to 10, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved to the lost. Now, if they are convicted of sins by the Holy Spirit, which is his ministry at this point in time, and they want to be saved, they call out to him in belief through faith that these Bible truths that we have reviewed here are of God, and they will receive Jesus Christ as their Savior by God the Holy Spirit. Who is the one who baptizes them? Who is the one who indwells and seals them unto forever? Unto forever the moment that they truly believe this is being born again. There is no extra born again or empowerment beyond. We ask for fillings of the Holy Spirit daily for the ministry. That's something we speak to God about daily. It isn't given by anybody else. No church, no individual, no group, no one. And after salvation, our prayers of confession of sins are heard by God. Jesus is our high priest. He's up yonder. He's not twiddling his thumbs. He's working every day. His blood is working every day to keep us in the faith, to keep us in, in salvation. But we have to pray to God because we're still saved sinners. 1 John 1 verses 6 to 10 and 1 John 2 verses 1 to 2 and beloved here it is have we turned our life over to Jesus and are we walking in the faith God gave us to believe and if we are we will demonstrate genuine repentance in a life lived for his glory Romans 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Beloved, if we are saved, then let's count on our salvation in Christ for eternity and confirm that great event with others who love God and are saved in joint fellowship, in loving fellowship, in caring fellowship, in the mercy of God, in the understanding of God, in the wisdom of God. Study the Bible, study the Word, 
His word is truth. It's Jesus in the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and God was the word. And by obedience to his commands, as well as these personal studies of his word in the Bible, we will be maturing. We will be coming more holy. We will be being sanctified by the power of the Holy Spirit in us, who is our ultimate teacher. If possible, let us demonstrate our belief by a baptismal ritual, which is commanded by the Lord. We are to follow and be obedient to his commands. And this is one of them, the baptism. Beloved, here is the great promise of Jesus to his church. Something we wait for, and that can happen any day, at any time. There's nothing standing in the way of God calling us home. John 14, verses 2 to 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. A few last words, beloved. Born again is by God's grace, through faith God gives, and eternal life God guarantees. Romans 11, verse 29. For the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Romans 8, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. We are glorified with Christ in the heavenly spiritual. We are glorified with him every day. And it never leaves. What 2 Corinthians 1 verses 21 to 22. Now he which established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. And that seal is permanent. You hear? It's permanent. Salvation is in three parts. Listen carefully. God has made it abundantly clear in all the scriptures, line by line, precept upon precept. We were saved from the penalty of sin, which is the wrath of God, in a final judgment on sinners. We are being saved from the power of sin to be made holy in Christ, which is called sanctification. This is ongoing. It is never complete until the call of Christ to come up to him. Finally, at the completion of the faith God gave us to believe, we will be saved from the presence of sin in us. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 8, At Jesus' call, we who are alive will, in our body of flesh, be blameless in Christ, not faultless. Then, at his call, we will be perfected like Jesus. Beloved, let us pray one for another. And now let me close. Father, we thank you for your word. We want to honor you. We adore you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for all your good gifts to us. Thank you for Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Father, anoint us and bless us for your glory this day and every day to serve you to the very end. And we pray in the holy name of Jesus Christ, the Amen. We say Amen.